Hey, are you ready to hang with your digital besties? What Day Is It? is a podcast covering every girl problem, life struggle, and biz reality out there. So pour yourself a glass of wine and get ready to laugh, relate, and celebrate not having it all together. At some point I got, uh, I went through a divorce and I had um, lost too much weight and everyone kind of complimented me all the time about how good I looked and how thin I was and it started to become a bit of an obsession that I didn't really understand or grasp. I didn't, looking back it seems so obvious. Um, I remember far too many times going and like face tuning my body even though I was like a size zero I was still just had such body dysmorphia just really really struggled to see it and um, sadly like a lot of friends would just compliment you on things or they would judge you and say you had an eating disorder and instead of me just like really grasping it and what was really going on so I started to kind of pay attention to that and uh, started following some people that I had previously rejected wanting to follow which was kind of this body positive movement I didn't want to I didn't in my head I didn't want to be fat again I didn't want to be this like girl and I had so much shame around that word and like what that meant and following these women who a lot of them had gone through a similar thing where they'd lost a lot of weight and they got to the end of it and were like oh I'm I'm not happy and like how do I how do I gravitate out of that and a big part of it was you know finding that balance and finding what health was really a body soul mind connection and it wasn't a number on a scale hey friends we're back hello hello friendships friendships i guess that comes out in this episode so we'll find out hello about friendships. yes yes you will <laughs> we're calling you guys our friendships yeah you're not guys you're friends i know sorry i have such a bad habit of saying you guys so it's okay it's gonna take a little bit but um yeah we are um coming to you live from our little podcast room and well not live at all but whatever <laughs> definitely pre-recorded <laughs> such a good start <laughs> Woo. we're on some chairs um, that bailey's gonna return <laughs> well they're really cute and comfortable but guys like I, friends i live in a two-bedroom condo in this second room i don't know how this is supposed to be a bedroom i'm sorry yeah but these chairs are definitely meant for like a house but they're really cute and i got Attached. them in pink and red because they go with like the play vibes yeah I don't know. Maybe we'll do a poll. Maybe when I maybe I should just go get the pink ones, set them up, and then and then return all four. Yeah. Also, when I was putting them together yesterday, I was putting them together in my living room, and then I realized that I couldn't. I had to assemble them in the room because they did not fit through the door with the legs on. Classic. So then I had to unassemble and reassemble. It, it was not <laughs> all fun. for a return that I know is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But I gotta find cute ones. I don't know these ones are really cute i know see i just like comfortable chairs like i don't want plastic chairs yeah i know that won't be comfortable Mm -hmm. so otherwise i know we won't sit in here on podcast but (laughs) anyways not that you guys care about this (laughs) um we are so we did a bunch of podcasts in nashville which you're gonna hear one today uh with the birds papaya which i'm so excited because it just was such an inspiring and for sure funny um just real podcast episode but it's been a long week, I feel like, for both of us, mm-hmm. and um, we had some recaps that we wanted to share with you that aren't actually in the episode, because, I mean, I think they're funny. I don't they're know if they're, hilarious. like, had to be their moments, but... No, they're not. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but, yeah, so Jackie and I had our first little travel trip together. I say we did pretty good, because you find out a lot about somebody when you travel with them. Yeah. What's something you found out about me? Um... Well, I got to see you function without baths. You know, that was there wasn't hard. even a bath in our loft, actually. I know. And I got home right away. And I, <laughs> ten, not even 10 minutes later, you guys. I know. She was in the bathtub. I walked in. I said hi to my boyfriend, kissed him, hopped in the bathtub. <laughs> like, I've been waiting for this for five days. <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, But no, I don't think I really learned anything too crazy about you. Yeah. Good. I think you learned I got bad anxiety. Well, yeah, I was a little worried about you. <laughs> I had anxiety one, one, one night. Point. Yeah, she didn't want to bowl with us. It's fine. Well, also, okay, so I was in a skirt mm-hmm. that I realized was a little too short if you bend over, and yeah, I was gonna bring. We were a rushing to get out the door that night. Which is yeah, I was gonna bring a change of clothes, but we were going to dinner before, and that just seemed a little extra. Nah, so it's okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> 
Um, but we had some fun air dropping people. Oh my God. We were really okay. trying. Okay. So we were having, as you guys all know, we were having difficulties getting this launched because it was our first episode and Apple had to approve it. So it was supposed to come out on Tuesday, but it ended up coming out on Thursday, which was our last day in Nashville. Um, woke up and we were super excited. So mm-hmm. we went ham on the way home trying to airdrop it to people. Some people don't know air- or don't use airdrop, but it's so convenient. Basically, you can just send a photo to anyone if you're on Wi-Fi. Like my mom has no idea where airdrop is. Oh, so, really? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But yeah, so you can any photo if somebody is on Wi-Fi and on their phone, you can airdrop it which then will show up on the other person's phone as like this message that's incoming like almost like you hacked their phone in a funny way like you can see a preview of the photo but you Mm -hmm. do have to hit accept if you want it on your phone yeah so we were really strategic with the preview that came up and we wrote on it it was like a screenshot of the podcast logo but then we over um we wrote over it with a snapchat letters and it said uh if you want a good laugh tune into our podcast we're two girls on your flight. Come find us for a prize. <laughs> we were just pushing our podcast. We're pushers. We got rejected 100% we of the time. No, not 1%. 100%. <laughs> not 1% accepted. We uh, Actually, we did it first in the lounge when we had our layover. And this lady, Tanya, like, I'm pretty sure she didn't. Oh, she Tanya. Saw it. Oh, my God, Tanya. And she turned around so and we were, stared at us because we were just crying It was this laughing. group of, um, like, ladies in their 50s, I yeah. would say. And they were sitting kind of in, so in the lounge, there was um, like squares of chairs, like they'd face, mm-hmm. two would be facing each other and then they'd be two backing on and two facing each other. So they were in like the little square next to us. And Jackie's like, look, I think that's Tanya. I think that's Tanya. She had an iPad and, and it said Well, because it said iPad. iPad. And I was like, does she have an iPad? And then we're texting each other because we don't want people to know it's us. But we're also crying we're laughing. Crying so laughing. So it's total dead giveaway. So they both turned around and stared at us. But we still, they still declined it. Yeah. Huge decline. And then on the plane, everyone declined. <laughs> it's fine. It just hurt a little. And if you guys were following our Instagram stories, I'm sure you saw. It's on our highlights. Um. I think it's under behind the scenes. So my BTS, favorite go was check when it we were on the sky train after our flight <laughs> to get into our car. And I tried it again. One more time. Just one last hurrah. Just to see. I wanted one accept and it didn't happen. But someone airdropped us back a picture of a fish. And it was, H is coming out it of It was like a meme. And we'll post it on our stories because it was yeah. just so random. So random. And we couldn't figure out who it was. And but. we were delirious by this point in time. So... <laughs> I don't know. If if anyone from our plane actually is following our podcast and yeah. listening right now, I apologize. I don't. It worked. They're following. We were crying, <laughs> laughing so hard the entire flight. And in the we lounge. were yeah, like oh my god, the guy beside you was not having no, any of it, he and he was supposed to have the middle seat, so he's probably like, thank we god. Him. He, he was taking my personal space. I was pissed. He was putting his leg it, like that is not okay, especially to somebody who was the middle seat. Like you've already got it bad enough. Yeah, respect. The I middle gave seat. you the window seat. Yeah. And you were going to put your foot in my But also, in we my were square. very, very annoying. And his feet smell. Oh. Gross. <laughs> I mean, maybe those were mine, but. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I know it wasn't. Oh, no, it was 100%. Yeah. And then in the lounge, we met some friends. Anna and David. David, yeah. David Co. David Co. Okay, yeah. Anna and David. Yeah. And um, we realized that Anna was from Vancouver and David was from Costa Rica. But we, like, made friends with this dude. He's. Yeah pretty uh well off yeah but he like very impressive he was very intelligent oh yeah lots in finance um he's starting a new gluten-free snack company with the founder of boom chicka pop like yeah it was really cool he was going to whistler to uh, what are the odds that we just like randomly met with this dude super super random but we ended up being on the same flight so we had like a trek to our um from the lounge to our gate Mm -hmm. So we walked with him and just had like a good conversation, but we started telling him we had a podcast and like forced him to listen to it basically. Basically forced But him. we get onto the flight. Jackie and I are sitting in our spots. I don't know where he went because he boarded before us because I thought he was like in business. Or I think he was in first class. But I didn't see him when we passed because you have to walk past first class. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. He asked for a shout out, by the way. So this is his shout out. Oh yeah. David Cohen, here's your shout out. Yeah. Um, but so we're sitting there and we're getting like on the instagram for the podcast we're getting a lot of dms like listened loved it and which by the way thank i just have to so interject much. here like thank you so much to everybody who listened who left a review like you blew us away we were number 13 on the siding I culture know. which is so much wild like jackie and i just kept texting each other waking up like holy shit these reviews are insane 
um like we just thought maybe our parents were gonna listen <laughs> no no honestly thank you so much for this I, I kept saying to people it means literally so much you have it no does idea. it does um but yeah so we're sitting there we're getting dms and i open one i didn't even really clue in it just because some usernames are just like numbers and letters it's and it's like lol was zero zero two yeah you know? and so i was just like oh thank you he was like um well the person was like listened loved it and said something about like the synergy between you two is great and I was like oh wow like I love that they got that from listening to it I was like thank you so much it means a lot that you listened and then I clicked on who it was after I sent the message and it was David Cohn oh, and then I was like oh you didn't listen you just uh met us because <laughs> it had been like 20 minutes at this yeah, point yeah he's like and he also long. was like I'm not gonna lie I'm probably not gonna listen like podcasts aren't my thing yeah. let alone like these two young girls <laughs> who are just kind of weird <laughs> And but, all over the place. Yeah, like literally. And I looked like shit. And he was like well put together. He was in like suit. a suit and I'm in leggings <laughs> or like sweatpants. <laughs> and oh my God, I had to toque no makeup. It was bad. Real bad guys. Um, But yeah. yeah, then I was like, oh no, you, we just met you. You didn't listen. I take it back. I take it back. And he was like, no, I listened. He's like, um, I'm not going to lie. It's probably not going to be my thing, but I did listen to this episode real good. Good Honesty job. Honesty is the policy. But I appreciate it. He made an effort. And he invited us to Costa Rica. Yeah. He owns a hotel in Costa Rica. Um, so maybe we'll go podcast in Costa Rica. Yeah. He was really nice. Very, very nice. Um, and then we continued to airdrop people <laughs> on the plane and die. Laughing. Really? You guys should just go watch our highlights. I think it's funny. <laughs> it was hilarious <laughs> we had a good time we it did. was just funny seeing that uh, people would obviously pause so it'd say waiting waiting sending and then all of a sudden be like decline and we're like <laughs> red red decline we're like cool <laughs> and we just we're so hopeful <laughs> not one uh, not one except no not one um okay but we have a new segment to introduce mm-hmm. and i think this is pretty funny Mm-hmm. it's called 22 versus 28 because jackie's 22 and i'm 28 and we literally say all the time when something funny happens that one of us can't relate to we're like 22 versus 28, 28. so we're turning- sometimes we switch roles though like this weekend when you broke your toe drunk yeah you were 22 yeah <laughs> and you were i was facetiming you to come meet us and you were like taking oh. off your makeup i'm at home go away yeah and i was like oh roles have reversed <laughs> which is very rare um But stay tuned because I do explain the toe story in another podcast coming up. I'm not, I'm going to make you guys tune in. Yeah, you have to tune into this (laughs) It's bad. Jackie looked at it today. It's bad. I've got it taped together with packing tape. Let's not give away too much. Well, I didn't talk about it. She's limping though. I'll say that. I'm limping and it's packed together or taped together with packing tape from my state of grace orders. (laughs) (laughs) I took the packing gun and wrapped it around my two toes. (laughs) Uh, um, Okay. But okay, yeah, so 22 versus 28. This one's going to be travel edition because we just got back. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll let you start off with a 22. Okay, I'm going to, this is one you don't know. Before we left, or actually when we're at the airport, Bailey sent me this itinerary (laughs) of our whole trip. I mean, this is just my personality. I was the same way at 22. It was really? 100%. I'm just very, like, flow. I've been this way since I was, like, 12. But it was an itinerary of two screenshots of what we were going to do and, like, down to the detail of changing outfits midday. And I just thought You know it was what? So in cute. all fairness, I only really put it together because Hunter Primo, who lives in Nashville, she wasn't sure what her schedule was like and I wanted her to come join as much yeah. as she could, so I sent it to her. You'd also been planning for a long time, though. 100%. I'm just trying to make myself feel better. <laughs> Whatever. Um. Okay, so 20... Eight. Um, I really realized how. Wait, what? I'm saying something for yourself. Yeah. Oh, we do that. No way. Okay, I guess I'm saying a 22 year old thing, and you were just saying 28. Sorry. Yes. So I'm saying a 22 year old okay. thing. Um, the difference in time it takes to get ready. <laughs> Jackie is like, I need minimum an hour, guys. I need to know what time we're leaving. Yeah. And yeah. Well, okay. I have to wash my hair every day. So that's just an issue for me. You can go. I wish I could go. You can. You no, just. No, <laughs> I can't. I literally cannot do it. Oh, I have to add something into this podcast at the end before I forget. But yeah, I definitely, I like to shower and wash my hair. And it takes time. And I don't like to be rushed or else your makeup looks like crap. So. Are you saying my makeup looks like no, crap? No, I didn't say <laughs> i'm just kidding i just yeah if we have to be somewhere if we have to leave at 8 30 i need to know what time i need to be up and get ready because i don't like making people wait so there's that which is respectful yeah there is you're thoughtful and but yeah just definitely 
very different. Mm-hmm. It takes you like 15 minutes to get ready. Mm-hmm. But I also only wash my hair like once a week. Yeah, I wish I could do that. Can it, Listeners, if you have a tip, because I, okay. You have to, okay, so here's the thing. You have to train, right? Yeah, because your hair will definitely be it greasy for work. like, no, I just, you have to push through it. Your hair will be greasy for like a week, but the longer you go, your hair will adapt. The more you wash your hair, the more oil you're producing in your scalp, which know, is making your hair greasy. I, because I work so much and I have to go out and do functioning things. I can't, <laughs> I can't do that. And there's days where I'll leave it for two and by the... St- <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> by the second day, it's like crusty. Crusty. Okay, it's not crusty, but it's like <laughs> so greasy that it's parting in chunks. That's not normal. Help me, people. I want you to do it so I can see it. I usually I can go max two days max, and that's with a lot of. Dry I want you to come over with and, your crusty, and- <laughs> greasy splitting hair. <laughs> Ew, <laughs> but and it, it makes my forehead break out. I've told you this before. Okay, fair enough. But wash your forehead. <laughs> I do. It still breaks out. Anyways, I need tips, tricks, and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my turn. Oh yeah, go. <clears throat> um, Bailey brought. I know where this is going. <laughs> first of all we get on the plane and she we let someone sit in the middle seat first okay well, let's talk about that first i feel like that's just a an us thing um so when i book flights i always if i'm traveling with somebody always always book aisle and window because Which is normal people obviously middle's less ideal yeah. so you have a better chance of somebody not sitting in between you mm-hmm. but jackie and i were like we're not gonna trade like we're just not in the mood yeah. tonight like we want to sleep it was a red eye so we left the girl in the middle but you also like aisle seat and i, like I love window, aisle which seats. is so weird i've never found someone who likes an aisle seat more than i me. love looking at the window but i i don't know why i think it's like a claustrophobia thing i love being able to like stretch my legs out in the aisle or be able to get up and go to the bathroom or not bug somebody so is there any other people in the world who like aisle though? we'll do a poll have on you met stories. anyone else um just the guy who didn't want to switch with sarah on the plane <laughs> Wait, oh, he, on the second flight. Remember? Well, yeah, males usually like that space. He was very tall too, so I think he. We'll do. We'll do a poll. Let us we'll know. Do a poll, but I definitely know I'm in the minority. Are you a Jack? You're a Bailey. <laughs> That'll be the poll. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay then. Okay then. <laughs> this person sitting in between us, and she texts me. I'm gonna put my compression. Well, socks no, because you were like, "Will you judge me if I take my moon boots off?" And I was like, "No," because I'm about to put my compression socks on. Guys, I'd never worn compression socks before on a flight but i definitely have like poor circulation or something because i end up with sausage feet and cankles when everyone, i fly that happens to everyone okay well i was just trying to be proactive but they're fucking hard to get on they're like spanks for your feet oh my god i was sitting there struggling like i text you a photo at one point but it wouldn't go through and it's like this thing Half dangling on. off my foot because i couldn't get it over my foot i didn't know compression socks were a thing that's they're, a 28 thing 100 percent they're oh for sure not a 22 it's actually probably like a 40 yeah nine year old thing uh yeah um i feel like i was running out of things for you oh so um you wanting to take shots yeah when we went out definitely a 22 year old thing well i thought we were all gonna get really drunk together and it just seemed like everyone wanted to keep a steady buzz. And I was like, I'm on vacation. Give me <laughs> I some respected shot. it. Honestly, I at one point when we went to that last bar, I would have. I just started to get a headache. Mm-hmm. And I was like powering through because the band was so good and we were having so much fun. Yeah. And I knew if I had a shot, I was going to go over the edge. Where well, I we, have actually been fun. Do, we actually did do shots. We, oh, we did do shots. Yeah. With Chapman. Yeah. We talk about that. He said it place. was like a 50% alcohol shot. It tasted like toothpaste. Yeah. No, it did. It was gross. And I spilt it all over myself. <laughs> <You're> 22. <laughs> um, do you have any more? Well, I just wrote that. I just wrote that you get up really early. So you guys wanted to be out of the house by like nine, yeah. 930 some days. And I'm yeah. like, oh. Because I like my coffee in the okay. morning. I don't even get up till 930. But that's <laughs> fine. No worries. <laughs> like no bath we gotta get up for no bath (laughs) yeah um and one thing i think we both share is that actually i would have thought the 22 year old would have done this versus me but um i had overweight luggage and had to put my stuff in your luggage but what are the chance i don't know if we talked oh no okay so we i jackie was debating on bringing a smaller suitcase or bigger one i was like definitely bring the bigger one because i i can just tell mine's overweight i did not wear even half of what i packed no me either but you gotta have options Mm -hmm. um 
And we get there and I put mine on the scale first and it's 56 pounds and you can lay at 50. Jackie puts hers on and it's 44 pounds. I'm like, we're meant to be friends. Like six pounds. It's perfect. Like what? It was perfect. Um, so yeah, you saved me. And we didn't plan that. We didn't plan that. Um, okay. Before we get to the episode, I know she's sitting out there waiting for me to say this. So I have to issue a very formal apology to Caitlin Molson. Oh, <laughs> Um, in our first episode, I made a tragic mistake. <laughs> um, and I, Caitlin, I know you're out there and I just would like you to know this is coming from the bottom of my black heart. Um, you are the only call girl in my life. <laughs> I take it back. I apologize. Um, you're the only one for me. So are you going to explain? Are we just going to leave it at that? No, I will. So... Jackie threw me off in the first episode because she called Caitlin Bristow Kate and I never call her that. My sister's name's Caitlin so I call her Kate. And I never call Caitlin that but I call the other Caitlin Kate and at work we used to call her cog well Kate girl but then it like morphed into this thing called cog girl and just out of a natural reaction on the first episode when Jackie said Kate I said cog girl and then really offended the original yeah, Kate, Kate, Kate was really so upset. I am issuing a formal apology to the masses <laughs> I think she'll be okay now yeah that's sorry. all she wanted okay wait are we gonna talk about our quotes we're at 20 minutes this oh. will be a long ass episode okay that's fine um maybe we'll save them for another day sounds good I feel like I feel like they were um I had to be their thing okay or maybe we'll make them into little snippets and post them on our stories okay sounds good <laughs> Um, okay, guys, we hope we're friends. We hope you love this episode. It's um, kind of dysfunctional at the beginning, but then it gets really inspiring and um, we can't wait for you to enjoy it. Yeah, so guys, thanks for, oh, friends, thanks for tuning in. See, it's hard. Okay, enjoy the episode and yeah, go. Bye, guys. It's friends. Not, it's not bye, though. You're going to hear our voices I'm in like worst. a hot second here. <laughs> I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> so excited we have our first sponsor i'm so excited too and it's so yummy it's so um, like something that we both love mm-hmm. we're really passionate about snacks, snacks. <laughs> that was good that was good <laughs> um naked snacks is our newest sponsor and if you guys haven't heard of them um climb out from under the rock that you're living under mm-hmm. but they are so so good naked snacks are the best tasting healthy snacks in canada They're a local family-owned Canadian company making healthy snacking convenient and tasty for all. Um, My favorite so far, I have to say, well, actually, they're not even here because I already ate the whole bag and Jackie didn't even get to try them, but they were the praline almonds. Oh, you actually ate the whole bag. I did. I thought you were saying this because it's almost gone. No, those are my second favorite. Wow, I'm upset. There's more coming. Okay. Okay. Um, But the sriracha cashews are also very good. Super good. good. Um, They carry snacks to meet all your dietary preferences, including gluten-free, nut-free, vegan, hello, um, plant-based, and sugar-free. And non-vegan. And non-vegan. We have some chocolate coming for you. Actually, I'm really sad I don't get to try the chocolate. But they are amazing, and you guys need to try them, so we've got a special little deal for you. Yes. If you guys want to get 20% off your first order of snacks, use the promo code WHATDAYISIT20 at nakedsnacks.ca. And I think it's all lowercase, right? Mm-hmm. What day is what it? What day is it 20? All lowercase. Yeah, so stock up on snacks because who doesn't want snacks? Get the hearty tamari. They're really good. Yeah, I think that's like your favorite so far. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Thank you, Naked Snack. And again, just to get your 20% off, it's what day is it? 20, all lowercase. And it's uh, nakedsnacks.ca. Drink that coffee because I don't know about you, but I'm real freaking tired. I really morning. needed this coffee. I did not sleep well. It's um, okay. So we're still in Nashville. And or I guess this is coming up before all the other ones. So we're in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nine o'clock here, which is seven o'clock at home for us. And I did not sleep well last night. Well, we've just been on the go this whole trip. Yeah. Like, I mean, really it's been fun. You're going to hear all the yeah. all the stories. But we have a very special guest. Our first ever guest. Which, like, I don't know how we're going to top this, really. But <laughs> whatever. You'll top it. Yeah. We have Sarah, the bird's papaya. The bird's papaya. You guys Hello. say it's so cute. Like, papaya. It's so cute. It's such a fun name. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for being here, here guys. Us. Guys, obviously, you invited me to Nashville and... This is just like the best. We cram packed, like cram packed. Is that right? Cram, <laughs> cram packed. Why does that sound so weird? We sounds crammed. 
cram packed. We cram packed this like <laughs> vacation. I'm just going with it. Um, <laughs> We really only had two days of like real Nashville, two days mm-hmm. of travel. So four days total. It's a whirlwind for you guys a lot more because your travel is quite a bit more. But yeah, it's been good. It has no, it's been, been so, so much fun. So much fun. And we, okay, so you and I just met on the gram. Yeah, this is the awkward part where people are like, ha, who are you? My mom's like, who are you going to Nashville with? And I'm like, my friend Bailey. She's like, oh, I don't know that I know her. And I'm like, oh, she's from Vancouver. She's like, well, how do you know her? I'm like, we met on Instagram. It's like, we met on like, this sounds like the beginning of every CSI episode yeah. she's ever seen. So yeah, no, it's real. It's nice. It's strangely normal. Like it doesn't really feel... It, it's weird when you come off of a platform into real life. The people that are very seamless for that transition, you know, is like a true connection. And, you know, it doesn't need to have this like tail line of, oh, we met online and there's like shame to that. I'm actually, I think it's quite amazing. It's so amazing. We cool. have so much in common too. Like we just kept bonding over different things from like friends to friends Aquaphor was a big one. and <laughs> everything Aquaphor in between. Is a big one. Aquaphor yeah. is a big one. Um, but yeah, we're so, so excited to have you on and, um, this trip's been so much fun. Like, I can't believe how kind of fast it came and went, but we were looking forward to it for so long. And we always talked about meeting in Nashville because it's insanely more affordable to meet yeah here, which is kind of crazy but it is kind of crazy and you love nashville and you would I talk do. about it a lot and i was like i've never been to nashville i've always wanted to go to nashville and um i think we got lucky i think we got lucky that um the flights were affordable we came at a time that's not bachelorette season mm-hmm. um which i think was really nice for us i still kind of think it's funny that it was cheaper for us to meet here in nashville than it was for us to fly to each other and visit in our hometowns but I mean, what an amazing opportunity to kind of get out of our norm and have some inspiring new space and like take pictures in front of every wall ever because they're everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, but they're so cute. And how can you not? So whatever it's we did. so cute. We're fine with it. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. Um, okay. So let's tell people about our trip because there are so many fun moments. Oh, God. And so many, <laughs> I think so many people want to know, like if mm-hmm. you're going to go to Nashville and you only oh, have Oh, we like, have so many days, recommendations for you guys. This is like... We could wildfire this whole thing. Like, I think people should definitely invest like a very small amount to come to Nashville and just like do it all because that's exactly what we did. Yeah, no, you'll love it here. It's very, um, you use the word charming, which I totally charming. agree with, but it's very uh, like casual and fun, laid back. Like, there's just and so many different things. Don't to be do. afraid if you're not country. Yeah, no, like Jackie is the I'm least a, country person yeah. I've ever met. But and I still had a lot of fun. Yeah. And there's a lot of other aspects of it just in the country. So it was funny. My um, one friend posted this picture that she took of downtown Guelph, like my hometown. And there was this before and after shot from like the 50s to now. And when I looked at it, all I could think about was that that's Nashville. Nashville kept everything they had from the 50s and the fort I don't even know how far back all the signs are kind of the same like it's literally walking into a bit of nostalgia with like these new updates that pay so much homage to it homage why am I like word homage. stumbling um today? we're tired your like I yeah. honestly words are gonna be hard for me today guys I apologize okay also I've decided I don't want to call our listeners guys I want to call them friends so like can okay. we say that's like, cute okay friends that. or like hey friends I always say that, so that's perfect. Okay, friendships. I'll probably be the one who has a hard time because I, I say hey. Guys I like a lot. to say hey friendships. What's up? Like hey, friendships. hey friendships! Oh my I gosh! I always that. wanted to get hey like friendships. friendship tattoos that were just little ships. Oh, that's and it was so like, cute! It's your friendship. <laughs> and when people oh ask, they're like, "What's that?" And it's like, "It's my Wait, friendship." Are those your thrifted earrings? Yeah, yeah they are my so thrifted cute. earrings. We will touch on the thrifting. We will. Um, okay, so. We came in on well, Jackie and I left on a Sunday night because we came from Vancouver, took and a nice red eye. we took a, a red eye, which I did not really enjoy. It was yeah, I, no, <laughs> I got I got fine. pretty I'm sick. Just, I'm just thankful to be here. Oh yeah, you got sick. <laughs> yeah, I, I got pretty sick. Oh yeah, I um I've never gotten sick on a plane before, and I don't know what was happening, but I. Uh, Spent 45 minutes in the bathroom, feeling like I was gonna throw she up. Just like got up and ran to the. Bathroom. I got up and ran to the bathroom, just thinking. I'd be more comfortable in there. And as soon as I got in there, my entire body started sweating. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. And I had to stay in there and just chill. All I could see was your head peeking out of, like, yeah. the edge of door. 
Um, and I, I'm so stu- worried because I'm in the window seat and there's someone between me. So I didn't want to be like, can you move? No, thought, honestly, it was OK. The stewardess was very kind. She made me peppermint tea. And then there was some really kind lady who saw me and she was like, I have gravel. Do you want some? <laughs> so I recovered. You did. I recovered. You did. Um, and then we met Sarah in Toronto. Yeah, we did. In the terminal that's basically Antarctica. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know what was going on there, but <laughs> Toronto is actually a really beautiful airport. I'm really sorry that you guys didn't experience it at all. I think you called Toronto's it the armpit amazing. Of the and we literally got in the armpit <laughs> of the airport. It was like this weird gate that you actually had to walk out to the plane. So I think because their door was open so much, the second you like walked through like, and we were coming to Nashville. So we were mm-hmm. wearing light jackets. I left my winter coat in the car for mm-hmm. a reason, <laughs> which newsflash, we came down and it was just as cold in Nashville, but... And we were delayed two hours, so we had to keep coming back. And we oh couldn't see God. the terminal. You guys, you could back. see your breath in this terminal. Yeah, you could see your breath. It was shocking. It was that cold. And when you had to walk out to go on the plane, I Sorry, literally screamed. You friends could see. I said, Sorry, guys. See, I know. I'm going to be bad, but I, it, I want but... to work on it. Um, but yeah, I, I literally screamed when I walked out. Oh, my God. She did. <laughs> she, so you had to walk from the actual terminal to the plane. And I don't know if you heard her, Sarah, but... No, I, like, went ahead. I, it was too cold. Oh, I bolted. Yeah, yeah. I bolted. You're, like, used to it, but Bailey went out there and goes, like, screams, and the whole airport... Not, like, okay, you didn't no. know it was, like, a loud... No, it wasn't, like, and a like, ah. jump. No, I just... I was, like, oh! <laughs> like, a, that kind oh, of scream? Okay. Yeah. It sounded a lot worse from inside in the whole... Oh, no, it was very loud. Like, oh... I, I think that. that was such a shock for me, too, because you were so jolted by Toronto weather, and I honestly thought that Vancouver was the same. No, I no. had no idea you didn't experience winter mm-hmm. like I experienced winter. No. Little, like, Definitely now I know no. that I can take, like, a... There was I can take a little no winter trip to Vancouver. There was onto the plane. Oh, yes. They de it. Inside? Inside. When I went up to go to the bathroom, the, uh, you walked towards the front of the plane, and it, like, slowly, the floor turned into ice. Oh, <laughs> and, like, <God>. snow. <laughs> I was like, this is not normal. Yeah, I'm thankful for Vancouver winter. I thought ours mm. was bad, but Toronto, I don't yeah, think I can minus, do it. We left on a day that was minus 22 in Toronto. So that was Jeez. quite, yeah, it can get really bad. Um, for us, it seems to be a lot of a later winter. So we get that really pretty dusting of snow and then it warms up and melts and then pretty dusting again. But I'm apparently coming home to like two feet of snow. So yeah. do, you, do you guys still walk outside or do you avoid that? Um, I don't know what other people do, <laughs> but I absolutely <laughs> avoid it. Like, I don't know how people do it. I my neighbor the other day, I think I was even telling you guys, they were like, oh, like, do you want to go tobogganing? I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> um, my children will be ready for you on the front porch if you'd like to take them. And she literally came down and she's in full snow pants. I don't even own snow pants. Like, I want every excuse to get out of being ex- out. <laughs> So if I'm like, oh, sorry, like I don't have snow pants. Um, she was totally bundled up with like hot chocolate to like bring to go tobogganing. The kids were like bundled where they could barely move. And they they came home and their faces were like so red. They only really lasted like an hour. There's Aww. there's a limit. Really? Yeah. Like it's honestly the time of year that I'm at the gym the most because I am not active in any other capacity because going outside like you're, the air hurts your face. Like yeah, it did. It there's that meme face. out there that's like, why do I live in a place where the air hurts my face? That's <laughs> actually my reality. And it's crazy. Yeah. But then we have a full swing where it's super hot in the summer. So I mean, it's crazy. It goes back. so extreme back and forth. Yeah, it is for sure. Um. Okay. So what did we do the first day we landed? We went and got blowouts. Oh yeah, we did. Okay. So we, we went did. to Hunter Page by Parlor Three, which is an amazing, amazing um salon. They've got like four different collections in here in Nashville, and they're all within a couple blocks of each other, but. I think it was a game changer for this trip. I, I know. And I know we had gone back and forth about whether or not we wanted to invest in that. And I, I looked at Bailey last night. We were driving back from dinner and I said, I think that that blowout changed the trajectory of the trip on how I felt stress wise because I didn't have to worry about like, I don't know about everybody else, but about you friends, but I only <laughs> wash my hair like once every five days. So my whole life is kind of scheduled around this. And I was already on day three three by the time we were flying and it was so nice to know that I didn't have to like go through that cycle when we landed or worrying about packing like shampoo and conditioner and all that stuff we landed it felt kind of gross and grungy after traveling and somebody washing your hair and drying it and styling it scalp massage and it lasted like the whole time we just had to do minor Mm touch-ups it was just honestly just a huge huge change and it was a nice little bonding experience when we first got there they poured us like little rosés and 
such a good kickoff to the trip. Yeah. I thought I highly, if you come down with girlfriends or even if you're just like with your family, need a break from children and husbands, like go get a blowout. Well, yeah, but usually you want to land and go do something and you always kind of look crappy from the plane, but it was really nice to just have your hair did and throw some makeup on quickly and you head out the door. Yeah. Cause Jackie, you weren't even thinking about getting one yeah. and all of a sudden you kind of changed I know, your mind. I, did. I was, I had washed my hair the night before and then I realized it looked awful. So I was so thankful we were there. And they had the Dyson hair dryers, which to be honest, I never would think about spending $600 on a hair dryer until I felt my hair afterwards mm-hmm. was so amazing. So yeah, mm-hmm. go check out Parlor 3 or Hunter Page by Parlor 3 if you're definitely. planning a trip. Mm-hmm. Such a good photo op spot as well, I would Super say. Super cute yeah, so and beautiful. Inside. We should definitely touch on like photo op mm-hmm. places for Nashville. That would be a really good one. It's very charming inside. So Take cute. notes, people. Bring out your notebooks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then after that, we... I Honestly, like, I'm so brain dead. I can't even remember what we did two days ago. Um, we went to Sp- Barcelona. Barcelona? Spain, yeah. But we came back to... Okay, so we checked in first, did we not? The 506 lofts. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this did. place, you guys, I like, I would n- never stay anywhere else. No, no I love it. Here. I couldn't. It, it, it's, it's so game, amazing. It's, like you have, it's so easy and effortless to check in. They, the team is so friendly. They've taken such good care of us and the accommodations are just beautiful. You have everything you need. Like we switched rooms because there weren't three available for our three nights. But the first room we stayed in was a loft, like a true loft style. And it had a kitchen, a living room, and then a pull-out sofa bed, slept for. And then, like, you go upstairs to the loft part, and there was a bed and a bathroom. And I think I loved that one the most, just because Mm -hmm. it was, like, a true loft style. And it kind of looks out to, like, the street, Mm -hmm. which was really cool as well. I think what was very different was normally you're in a hotel, and you kind of have that hotel-y feeling. This literally, and maybe because we all don't really know each other, it felt like you were going over at a girlfriend's house and just staying there. Completely. It felt like home. You're in the middle of downtown Nashville. We were, I think, a block and a half from Broadway. So we were able to walk. It's a great location. Mm -hmm. Back from, like, Honky Tonk. Yeah, it phenomenal great find yeah. great it's find. so cute and inside. you still have everything like it's not like an airbnb where you have to clean up after yourself there's yeah. um like cleaning services but yeah no it's it's definitely the best hands of both. Down. i think it's hands kind of like down. that in between her so 506 lofts you five can stars get stuck in the elevator though i will say that <laughs> If your friend doesn't tell you that you need the, the star, correct code. The code, these girls yeah, didn't tell me the correct I code. I gave and you the I, correct code. I just didn't tell you have to press star at the end. And I was stranded in the elevator I'm and sorry. out of all doors. It's okay. You survived. It's, it's fine. It, I'm fine. It builds. I feel bad about how long you were stranded for. So do Cause I, because we, we were actually, doing. We're I'm getting ready, and then we're like, oh right, we're are they we're locked out. Like, why are they taking so long? I was yeah, like, when are they going to get an elevator? And then I got down to get Blair. I was stuck, and her phone was dead, and I didn't bring my phone. Yeah, it's just <laughs> bad planning. Uh, um, so yeah, then we went to Barcelona, which is a little wine bar, um, and we had a really honestly, like I think my favorite meal. It was my favorite that meal. That was as Monday well. night, right? Yeah, it Monday was an night. overwhelming menu. And like disclaimer, I am gluten free and vegan. Bailey is vegan, and Jackie is good with everything. But we were able to the the Where menu was overwhelming because we so. didn't know. <laughs> We didn't really know what everything was, so it was interesting to kind of just say to the waitress, and she just took out a pen and just like cross yeah, circled out here. and crossed and out. They were so so accommodating and kind. They and just I think we ordered right on seven menu. plates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but we yeah no we had like these roasted carrots, this butternut squash. It was like a tapas style, so everything yeah. we just shared a bunch. Um, some truffled mushrooms. I think though one of my favorites was the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say that. And oh, we had eggplant, which I surprised me. I really did like yes, it. Yes, I like that too. But the chickpea one, it came game out changer. game changer. It came out, and we're like, nope, this has cheese on it. Like, yeah, we, we can't had to call her this. back over. And it, it did was, look like cheese, so it was baked, but it was like hummus, like baked hummus. It was like cream spinach, but made with hummus instead of like a like a thick cream and cheese. So you and I've never had warm hummus before. I don't know why I've never even thought about that before. I think but it's going to change how we both cook. Yeah. And it was came out in this like cast iron little pan. It, what a simple, simple protein source that tasted it was so just indulgent. Spinach, chickpeas, and onions, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it. Would, I think they must have just sautéed the onions mm-hmm. with some spinach and then added that hummus in and baked it. So good. So it was phenomenal. I definitely. I forget what I had. I can't, I can't wait sure. to cook it for my you husband. It was so good. Uh, I had a little potato. 
<laughs> but it that's right. Like no, a you did. Thing. It, it was really good. It was like flaky. I don't remember what else they had, but I you do. You had like a potato pie. Yeah. And yeah. then I remember we had, it was half off bottles of wine. So that was great. Monday night. Yeah. That was really good. And then they have a, a if you're into like charcuterie, they have a lot of meats and cheeses that yeah. Blair had. So and they have a tasty. really great bread tower. Yeah, they got <laughs> we got bread towers. I love bread, so yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. We were so starving at that point. We were just eating the bread. Mm-hmm. I will say, like, I think it was fairly inexpensive too. I think our bills were about like half price bottles of wine, and we had like seven plates. And what, by the time it was split, it was maybe forty bucks each. Which yeah, we were there for hours, so no, it was really good, really yeah. worth it. Yeah, it was half price bottles of wine on Monday, so going on Monday. Yeah, yeah, definitely Monday. And then what do we do after that? Do we come back? We came no. back. We did a little. No, we went to um, L27. I, I forget. We did no, so I know. much I'm stuff. I'm literally, but I'm oh also God, still we waking up there. there. We went you to went L27, where? which was, was the that? rooftop. The rooftop um, bar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was at the Westin um, rooftop bar, and it was a very beautiful view. So if, it was a little quiet. I will say that. Like, it's not, a, I think, also just time of year. Well, it, was, it was a Monday night. Monday night, January, and but it was an incredible view definitely worth that and it was kind of like a nice turn down at the end of the day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. had a nice cocktail a nice nightcap yeah and then we came back night. and hung out waited for podcast with blair waited for nikki to get here yeah nikki showed up at 11 o'clock at night she had the same travel schedule as me and jackie went through antarctica <laughs> and also got delayed a little bit yeah <laughs> Um, and then we went to bed because we were exhausted. 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 But I think that was the best sleep I've had this whole trip. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Slept like yeah. a baby that night. And then we had a very busy day the next day. I honestly, you're going to have to. We went to 12 South. Remember. Okay. We started with we woke up. Frothy. Monkey. Yeah, we went to, Fro- Sarah and I went to Frothy Monkey, um, took some pics and came back to the loft. This is all the boring stuff they don't want to hear about. And then we went to 12 South. So 12 South, honestly, like I'm the only one who had been to Nashville before out of all the four of us. And I knew it was the first place I wanted to take you guys because there's very cute little shops. Um, there's coffee shops. There's like white mercantile is this old school gas station that's been turned into this um, like clothing at home goods store, which I love. And then there was Bar Taco, which we went to for lunch. And so, so, so good. good. Their spicy margs are so good. I had a regular marg. <laughs> they have, it's like family style. So um, you can order a bunch of different tacos. They have secret tacos. Okay, I want to talk about the secret tacos. Because my mouth, it changes every, time I it think changes about every it, month it though. So like, I'm sorry. You might not I wrote to on their comment card, one. put this secret taco on the menu. It was a Brussels sprout taco. I don't know what it is taco. about Nashville, but they know how to do their Brussels sprouts because that mm-hmm. taco was so good. So, so good. You would never think about Brussels sprouts in a taco, but. I've had a Brussels sprout taco before. That yes. was not my first. And okay. it was very good. I will say at Bar Taco, my favorite was the cauliflower mm-hmm. one. It was. And, and it had it like a good kick Cauliflower is a nothing. Let's be real. Like cauliflower is something that you use as a base to be something else. It was delicious. It was mm-hmm. my favorite. Mm-hmm. By far. So, so good. Um, yeah. And all their cock. I mean, I've only had um, margaritas, but all their cocktails are really, really good. And the manager was so sweet. Yeah. So kind. Um, we met up with Hunter Primo for that lunch and I think Nikki, I died. yeah, <laughs> are you, I think All she's, are like <laughs> she got a taco bandana and it's actually really cute. I really it's like very, it. very cute. It has little tacos on it. Yeah. And then, yeah, we just explored, we went to Five Daughters Bakery, which is a donut shop. Also a must go to if you're in 12 South. Another good photo op. Another good photo op. They have like little donut walls um, and they do have vegan and gluten free donuts. Yes. So that's I was shocked, actually, because last time I came, I wasn't. You're going to eat yours right now. Is it not stale? We got this two that days ago. Two days ago. Nikki just broke it out. Yeah, I was going to say that. Seems I mean, it's very still edible. Nikki I'm got sure. a donut with bacon on top and picked the bacon off and left the donut for two days. And now she's going to attempt. To yeah, eat it. it's no, <laughs> I have no <laughs> words right now. This is why we call her two steps. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely Five Daughters Bakery. There's a Frothy Monkey in 12 South, too, so you can always start with that there. We have one by 506 Where Lofts. Where did we go before 12 South? We went to a Oh, the area. Gulch. Oh, so oh, we went gulch. to the Gulch. And there's some cute boutiques that we went shopping yeah. at. There's um, 
E. Allen Boutique, which was the first one that we went to, which was playing Lennon Stella. Mm-hmm. And then um, there's Blush Boutique, which... I loved Blush Boutique. Yeah, so did I. That's also one of my favorites. Which one was that? That was the second one we went to where you... Um, the little the jumpsuit that you okay, liked okay. but yeah, didn't I get. Did like that place. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah, so we did some shopping. Probably That's all where the Angel Wings were, too. Yeah, so in the Gulch, there's um, a very iconic mm-hmm. wall mural of Angel Wings. Definitely check yes. that out. Okay, and then we just randomly decided to go to this one place called Uncommon James. <laughs> it was not random. It was planned, but... Well, yeah, we definitely planned to go there. We're like, while we're here, we might as well. Like, yeah. we are all... I, well, I'm old school Laguna Beach fan. Oh, God. I just introduced Jackie to The Hills. It's, it's so crazy. 2018 slash 2019. And I just started watching The oh, Hills the best. slash the Laguna best. Beach. It's and, so and so crazy. it's so fresh for me, the obsession. So I was like, yes, let's go. We got there and they just finished filming. Well, we pull up and you guys are like, there's camera equipment. And I was like, oh, stop. <laughs> I was like, no way. She's probably not there. We walk in. Just and looking around. I'm, cool. I'm creeping hard. I can and hear Jackie her comes voice. up to me panicking. She's like, she's in the back. She's in the back. She's in the back. And then I go up to Sarah. I'm like, she's in the back. She's in the back. She's in the back. <laughs> and then she comes out and Sarah's like, should we get a photo? And I walked up to Bailey with just a look on my face. <laughs> and then Bailey turned to Sarah. And then Sarah had the balls to just be like, yeah. can we get a picture? Which, thank Honestly, you. Honestly, are we allowed to swear? But like... Yeah. Oh, that's oh, oh yeah. like fuck it like seriously I'm one of those people that I'm all about like respecting somebody's privacy but she's clearly there as part of her show and mm-hmm. stuff like that they knew we we're there there wasn't a ton of people and I was like hey girl do you mind if we get a pic and she, she was, was like, very kind she just puts her flowers down she's like of course yeah. and like can, and then we're like can and we do a, a group selfie. photo and she's yeah. like yeah she's like oh yeah 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 and then she told her girl something about packing up flowers and and just stood and took pictures with us and just was I know she's like it's funny because back when I used to watch Laguna Beach she was kind of like portrayed as like the bitch of the show and I was always team Kristen because I loved her candidness I always felt like she was kind of dealt this card of like just because she kind of spoke her mind which is not something I typically can do very naturally I was I just thought it was really interesting that she was kind of portrayed as a bitch because she was honest and um so meeting her in real life and her just being like this super down-to-earth super kind I keep saying super but she's beautiful so So tiny and beautiful yeah Mm -hmm. loved her I'm team Lauren but I still love Kristen I know you guys are team Kristen but I just you know what I love Lauren she's just a very I don't ever want to talk down about another human. Um, she's a very curated person. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that I've ever in all the years of watching her on TV ever emotionally connected where, I don't know, maybe somebody who, even if they're a total opposite personality from me in emotions and how they deal with them, I felt more connected just knowing that they had them where like Lauren is maybe a little bit more of an escape where you need things to be nice and clean and proper. And it's, I love her for it's that. It's so weird because I feel like I, I could understand her emotions more. Personally, I could just connect yeah. with her more. I don't know. It's because she's a little closed off and yeah. she, I feel like she mm-hmm. fights her emotions and like that's just how I am. So it's kind yeah, of. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. She's honestly, she's one of the best creators out there and she deserves everything that's ever happened to her. I just got to okay. love Kristen. But we, okay, I love that store. I got the cutest earrings. I think everyone bought a little piece of jewelry. Yeah, we had to. She just took pictures with us. Yeah, so. definitely. Well, and I, and I just love those something. earrings so much. So um, I want to blow through the rest of her trip because I don't want to run out of time okay. because we do have to go to the airport in like an hour. Oh, good point. But um, so yeah, check out Uncommon James. Mm-hmm. Then we went for dinner. Um, where the hell did we go for dinner? We came back. We got ready. And then we, we podcasted we went with went Elizabeth. To oh, yes. We went to... Where did we oh, go? my gosh. Nikki? I almost said, what day is it? But... <laughs> what the? Oh, like my God. All of what the hell? <laughs> Should we revisit this in a moment? <laughs> this is why this podcast is... What day people is are You can edit out this long pause. It's fine. What did we I'm do? Gonna I don't even know. I'm going to go look at photos. We, talk, we went to... Holy shit, guys. Like, I'm actually... Um, okay, before we went to Honky Tonk, we went to Rolf and Daughters. Yes. Oh, Rolf and uh, Daughters, right. I, what? Okay, and they have the best vegan sorbet, I have to say. Oh, that place. Yes, it was yes. very good. So good. The we food was really pasta. good. I had a really good pasta. The food was really good, yeah. And they have gluten-free pasta. So yep. we yeah, again, be- accommodating. So Rolf and Daughters. And then we went Honky Tonkin. Yes, we did. It was did. a little quiet. It was a little quiet, it was, but a little it was quiet, still an But experience. we made the most of it. Tootsies we went was not quiet. 
No, Tootsie's is like the most popular place on Broadway, I would say. So definitely check that out. And if you don't know, Nashville bars are all like three levels. So just be comfortable. The music's insane. It's like the, it, So talented. It's what you pay hundreds of dollars mm-hmm. to see anywhere else. And they're just playing in the middle of a bar and you just walk in and grab a drink. It, it's phenomenal. Really, really such a cool vibe. Even on a quiet night, it was, it was amazing. But let's get to like the actual best part of that entire night. Karaoke? Karaoke. Oh, my God. I had Blair's so not much here, fun. but Blair's a Blair karaoke star. We dominated. Yeah, it was it was unreal to watch. We'll post that it on our stories challenge. when this comes out. For sure. She asked me to do it with her, and I just, I I did, I said no at Oh, first. wow. Yeah, you did it. I, know. <laughs> I said no at first because, I'm sorry, are you okay? <laughs> Nikki just hurt her finger. <laughs> and I walked to the bathroom with Bailey, and I said, I, I honestly could not do it with Blair because I know I would be up there on stage, and she'd be owning it. Oh, yeah. It's so awkward that I would just stand there. As so me and Jackie, the awkward ones, did it together and team bonded Yeah. over Lady Gaga. And Bradley I had never Cooper. done karaoke before, and I know The Bailey bartender hadn't. sang secretly for us in the back. Yeah, thank God she did. We held the yeah. mic strategically far away enough yeah. that you couldn't hear. Um, so wannabes. Oh, and then we all sang the Friends theme song. I think that was pretty epic. Yeah, it was good. Um, and then we went to Nudies, which I think was the most fun. The band at Nudies was a lot so, of fun. So, so good. Yeah. Um, What's with all these names? Nudies, wannabes, losers, winners, tootsies. Is that like a thing here? Mm. Southern, yeah. yeah. Got a couple of fun names. Um... And then yesterday, we did some thrifting. We did. We you went got thrifting. some mugs for your collection. Yeah, I'm going through a little bit of a clearing out my cabinets of anything boring and going for really like vintage cheesy mugs. And it's amazing. It's the best thing ever. So it was fun to come to Nashville and find a couple that I now have as memory mugs of here. And they mm-hmm. were like 99 cents. But And we went cool. to, um, if you guys want another mural wall, there's a red lipstick one right outside. I think it's called Hillsborough Village. Um, there's where coffee Fido shop. is. It's like yeah. Taylor Swift's favorite coffee shop. Yeah, really cute. They had good little lattes. So and there's lots of shopping around there. Yeah, like some really tip. cute shops. It was raining at that point, so we were running through <laughs> from place to place. But we got some cute little buys in there. Mm-hmm. I like for another like shopping strip where you can go and definitely spend an afternoon. Worth it. And that little like lipstick wall was so cute. We actually went back after. So we after you yeah. left, we oh, went really? back to that Do area. you want to tell why you left? Uh, yeah, I left because I, what did I eat? To. No, I can edit can. that question out. We can definitely tell. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> so we were like, I don't, what did we have for lunch? I, honestly, I was a little hungover. I don't drink that much. And for whatever reason, alcohol is just like not agreeing with me lately. So I was feeling a little hungover. And I had to have breakfast, which isn't normal for me. And my stomach's like very sensitive. So um, had breakfast. I'm not feeling super great. Like just feeling very bloated and not fun. And then we went and ha- tried to have lunch. We had and pharmacy, right? Yeah, we had pharmacy. Really cute. Um, it was really good. I think we just yeah. were like kind of It was just of like full, full but needed to eat. Like it was a weird mm-hmm. middle ground. Mm-hmm. So then we went to that. Is it Star Trek? Starstruck yes. Vintage? Yes. Really cool spot. Another good painted wall there as well. And we were in there and I'm just feeling like I'm going to explode. Like it was one of those feelings where you're so bloated that my jeans were going to pop off or you could like stick a pin in me and I was just going to like deflate like a balloon across the room. (laughs) I felt that. So I'm like, you know what, guys, like I got to go. Like you were talking about feeling nauseous in Mm. the airplane. I was starting to get that same feeling like this. It's so bad. I feel nauseous and I'm like sweating. So it's clearly just gas to me. Like I'm not thinking it's anything else. And I step outside and like I can feel myself letting go a little toot. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this has gotten so bad where my butthole literally cannot hold it in anymore. So thankfully I'm outside. I've called my lift. It's fine. It's like raining, whatever. So dramatic. It's and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like a moment. And it's like, it's trauma for me now. And I realize as I start to walk towards where the lift is that it definitely was not just a little too. (laughs) There is some, there is some shart in there. Oh (laughs) my God. Which was like, and I text Bailey and she doesn't see it. And I didn't, I still don't. I don't know. I don't know. But I was like, how are you not responding to my trauma? Because I'm sitting (laughs) in the back of this lift. You were for a hot second, but it was an accident. It's totally okay. (laughs) Um, I'm sitting in the back of this lift and the driver's like asking me about everything in my life. And all I'm thinking is, 
how do I answer these questions like as short and as courteous as possible? Because like my ass is <laughs> working out so hard right now to clench this that I'm not actually sitting in it. So I'm kind of just like clenched above the seat. It was a lot. It was no, there wasn't like a lot in my underwear. It's just like it was a lot. To <laughs> a lot to process. And he wanted to know every detail about your career. He wanted to know so much about everything. And he was telling me about his life, which was uh, normally like my jam. I love when people open up to me. It's like my favorite. But in this moment, I was just like, I, it was, it was crazy. And then like, I just came home and it was just gas everywhere. Oh Thank God. goodness you guys stayed out shopping because I needed you guys to not be here. And then <laughs> I needed it to like ventilate out. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad you didn't have to walk into that gas oh bomb. My but gosh. I mean, the joys of traveling, travel get is no joke. Mm-hmm. It's been, it happens to me every time. I know Billy, you I and I talked vacation about it. Constipation. It's crazy. And then all of a sudden it's just like, hello. Yep. No, it's, so it's, it's, it's a real happens. struggle, guys. Um, yeah, and so after Sarah recovered, we went um, for a big group dinner last night. And I mean, you got to go see Doug the Pug. Yeah, I, I got invited over to Doug the Pug's house to meet my friend Leslie, who we another Instagram friend. And I'm a pug mom, so it was such a cool experience. I also thought, like, I don't know what I thought. Like, he's a famous pug, so I guess I thought he was just going to be like this totally different type of pug no like pugs are pugs <laughs> and he was just like this snorting Aww. cute little thing so very cool and yeah. then met you guys for dinner which was yeah, yeah. so Charming. we went to fifth and taylor which was an amazing amazing restaurant so good. um highly Great recommend atmosphere. it yeah and we just yeah. got to do a big like dinner with a bunch of friends from here and i just love connecting people so that was a lot of yeah. fun um and then we went bowling Mm-hmm. Pinewood Social, Pinewood Social, Pine Social, Pine Social which is really place. cool. There's like, um, it's a restaurant. I would recommend going there for a cocktail, like a nightcap, and then you can go bowling. Um, and I was falling asleep, but yeah, you guys had fun. I had fun. It was good. I it was worth bowling, it to but, see. I think oh, 100 percent. I knew that you guys. We are so tired, and I know that had we not made that deposit, we would have bailed. But now, retrospectively, I'm glad we yeah, went no, because 100%. it is it, it is our one last of those experiences. night, and it was yeah, fun. We so, needed to push ourselves a little. But yeah, and now we're Sarah's just, an amazing bowler. I uh, bowled yeah. in the league as a child, so I have like shows. baseline skills. But my father is like, just her first bowl was a strike, guys. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean it was all downhill from there, but it was a really <laughs> nice moment for me, and I relished in it very yeah. much. So, um, yeah, my parents met in a bowling alley, so they were very uh, nostalgic about it. So they put me and my sister in a bowling league when we were kids. So that's so cute. Yeah, my dad's like bowled a perfect game, and bowling with him is a disaster. Normally, I'm the worst scorer. It's a perfect so it game felt strike good. every time. Yes. She's, what? He's her dad's bowled a perfect game. That's a strike every time. Yeah, it's crazy, but. I know like now I'm like if I bowl with him and like my family at all I'm the worst so it felt really good to be the best <laughs> I was Wait, I was in your position because Jackie time. was like we you have to self-score there because it's a really really uh, really old system so it's done on like a little iPad at your station and it was so funny watching Jackie bowl and I'd be doing her scores and I'd just be like making a face like ooh, <laughs> like zero 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 and that's yeah. an that's another zero <laughs> Bowling's not my talent. That's but okay. you did no, it. Wasn't, I but did. you're great. It was, it was fun. It, it was really fun. It was fun. Um, yeah, and here we are. We leave in an hour, which is crazy. But it was so fun to come together with just some really quality humans. Mm-hmm. And okay. I think that's something we've talked about a lot yeah. on this trip is just like finding your people and just quality people. It doesn't. You don't have to know them for 20 years. You don't have to know them. No. Or it doesn't matter how you met. But yeah, like. I feel like I've known you forever. I feel like I've known Blair forever, Hunter, like Elizabeth, just all these people are so amazing. Blair said last night, she's like, I was like, I was at dinner and I looked around and I just felt like everyone was my friend. Yeah. Yeah. It's so special. Well, some of us only know each other for a few days. So that's really cool. I think vacations are a little bit of like a pressure cooker for friendships. And so it is a little bit of a test at the same time as it is an experience. Oh, totally. You learn about people when you travel. Yeah. Like you're going through their just like bodily functions to their sleep habits to like what they're like when they drink too much or what they're like when their feet are sore and all of these (laughs) things come out and 
it's a really nice opportunity to kind of just get to know these people. What I loved about it was that we were able to kind of, yeah, like jump that gap between social media and mm-hmm. real life and really kind of understand that it is very real and it doesn't have to be this like 20 year old friendship. We had an amazing time and I could, I could come back with my best friend in a heartbeat and have a very similar experience. And I think that that was, that was quite cool. And just so everyone knows, like there's quite age gaps here mm-hmm. too. Yes. Um, Jackie, you're 22. Yes. Blair, you're 28. Blair? Blair, I'm sorry. (laughs) How old is Blair, though? I think Nikki and Blair are the same age. They're 24. Yeah, she's two years older than me. Bailey's 28. He's 25. I'm 28. I'm 34, but that's rude to mention. But whatever. (laughs) We can edit that. (laughs) I'm 34. I'm proud of it. Yes, as you (laughs) should be. Hashtag Botox. But yeah, no, it it was just kind of seamless. And um, we, yeah, like we all just got along and it was amazing. You could tell us the youngest at points in the trip, but that's okay. No one wanted to do shots with me. No, hangovers <laughs> when you're in your 30s are really hard. I really thought Nikki would step up to the plate with me. I don't do shots. Ever? No, well, no, unless it's like Jameson. She's, I would have done a pickleback Jameson shot with you. Oh. Hey, I did shots with you. Yeah, thank you to Chapman. <laughs> I wonder if he'll listen to our podcast. I don't think we ever told him the name, but we did these. Actually, you guys did two shots, didn't you? I did. I did that peppermint thing. I'm remembering. Sorry, now. Shane. <laughs> yeah, Shane has a rule for me. I no shots and comment. no kissing boys. So I typically you, you didn't break. kiss any boys. So I know I didn't. I definitely just broke the shot rule. It's Sorry. only because he knows what it's like to deal with me hungover. So he probably didn't care when I was on this trip. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. He's, um, I gave him a bad Uber rating because of. That's all. That's why he doesn't like me to drink too much. <laughs> You're I not puked, allowed to order I, Uber now. I puked phone. outside an Uber on once his... and got a bad Uber score and it like made him not be able to catch a Uber in San Fran. So he's like, we're no longer allowed to use my Uber account when you're drinking. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my God. I know. You never recoup. <laughs> what was your guy's favorite part of um, the whole trip? Honestly, just hanging out with you guys was super fun. Of course, I'm sure everyone will say that, but it was just nice like meeting you guys and doing I mean all everything in between was super fun but just like hanging out definitely honky tonk that whole vibe and just like being with your girlfriends and Mm -hmm. I mean there's still guys around and they're still trying to come up to you and it was nice to be with a group of girls like Jackie like literally had my back at one point and just like put her arms around me when this guy like kept trying to pull me aside and there's nothing about being with girlfriends when you're like we're not here for anything but each other Mm -hmm. and like there's no kind of penetrating that it was such we just dancing with each other and singing and having such a great time we had probably not even any alcohol in our system at that point no. we were totally sober just like dancing up a storm that's that's my favorite kind of nights no it was so much fun yeah, yeah. Nikki? i mean come on bar taco okay tacos yeah <laughs> why did i ask <laughs> <laughs> She got taco socks. You did get taco <laughs> socks. Um, yeah, no, it was just honestly like I'm very, very grateful for all of our friendships and just how it's evolved. Like I wouldn't have met. It's just funny how it all happens, right? Like I wouldn't have met Jackie without you, Nikki. And like I wouldn't have met you, Sarah, without starting play. Like yeah. it's just. Yeah, I don't know. The universe is funny. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Girl Strip 2.0 is coming at you guys soon, hopefully. Yeah. And we got to get these Nash Philians out to van yeah and you out yeah to van. <laughs> out to van. yeah i need to do vancouver again i've only been there for a hot second and i just fell in love with the food and the vibe there mm-hmm. so would definitely love to come back you know we'll see got to figure out how to do that cheaply but right <laughs> it's crazy um okay we have listener questions for you and i know that we kind of have left out a big part of who you are and what you do so i want to touch on that a little bit too um so you have obviously like such a huge presence on Instagram for being so raw and real and open and talking about um, just the industry of body bodies in media and all of that. So how did you just like in a quick brief way? I mean, we still have like 20 minutes to podcast. Okay. Um, how did you kind of get started with that? I know people probably have a little bit of a background, but in case they don't. Sure. So my Instagram was like most people's. I posted pictures of my kids and like the occasional selfie. It was an extension of my Etsy shop at the time, which I sold jewelry on. And uh, yeah, so the bird's papaya was kind of born and I was 
going through like a lot of life stuff. I had some major health issues and I just kind of wanted to tackle that and through um, just like sheer determination and lots of other factors, I lost a hundred pounds and my Instagram kind of started to grow over this really big community of weight loss. And I think that that was kind of what I was doing. Um, and then coming through that, it was a couple years of that. And, you know, my story was shared a lot. I think a lot of people found a lot of hope in that. And I don't ever want to detract from that. That's not my purpose now. But um, there a lot of people found hope in the fact that I didn't do some program or anything. It was just changing my relationship with food and integrating exercise into it. But at, at some point I got, uh, I went through a divorce and I had um, lost too much weight and everyone kind of complimented me all the time about how good I looked and how thin I was. And it started to become a bit of an obsession that I didn't really understand or grasp. I didn't, and not looking back, it seems so obvious um, I remember far too many times going and like face tuning my body, even though I was like a size zero, I was still just had such body dysmorphia, just really, really struggled to see it. And, um, sadly, like a lot of friends would just compliment you on things or they would judge you and say you had an eating disorder. And instead of me just like really grasping it and what was really going on. So I started to kind of pay attention to that and, uh, started following some people that I had previously rejected wanting to follow, which was kind of this body positive movement. I didn't want to, I didn't, in my head, I didn't want to be fat again. I didn't want to be this like girl. And I had so much shame around that word and like what that meant and following these women who a lot of them had gone through a similar thing where they'd lost a lot of weight and they got to the end of it and were like, oh, I'm, I'm not happy. And like, how do I how do I gravitate out of that? And a big part of it was, you know, finding that balance and finding what health was really a body, soul, mind connection. And it wasn't a number on a scale. And so following some of these women, it, it really encouraged me to actually unfollow some other accounts too that were very diet culture and fitness related. And and because my Instagram was kind of this journal of my life, I just kept sharing those things. And I realized that even in the body positive movement, there was such a lack of two major, major things for me, which were stretch marks and cellulite, which I have in abundance. Because people can look at me and be like, oh, you're a size six, you're small, like you're not really a body positive. And I, I really had to like bring to light some of my biggest insecurities and it, it freed me. It really did free me. And I, and I connected with people in a much bigger way. I feel so much more fulfillment now. I feel so much more real. I don't really have this need or desire to face tune myself or to overfix myself and having that, um, mind to perfectionism when like in the mirror, I started to really celebrate those differences and, and kind of connect with women on there. So, yeah. Being around you, it's really contagious too, because like you talk about being a size six and you talk about being like, or not being, um, but like body dysmorphia. Cause yeah. you and I are the same size. We're the same size. And we bonded over this. Cause like I never have anybody to share clothes with. And yeah. it's funny to look at you and know that we're the same size because like, I would never look at you and be like, that's how my, I mean, we obviously we have no, different bodies, I but know, like, but still. I still wouldn't look at you and be like, oh, like that's my body type or my size. Yeah, I would. I said the same to you. I'm like, you're like my dream body. And it's so bizarre to me to be like, we're the same size. And that's what body dysmorphia does for you is that you look at somebody else and you desire what they have and never really recognizing and appreciating what we have ourselves. And it's totally about like honoring other people's bodies and how different we can really be, but just like connecting over ourselves as a whole too. It, it can be so powerful and beautiful when you kind of get to make, have that authority over your own body and just like celebrate it. But I feel like as an in-betweener, like I'm not, I'm not plus size and I'm not thin and it's just, I, I, I love all bodies, like for sure. I gravitate towards admiring curvy bodies a little bit more, I think, because I just love their confidence. Mm -hmm. um, it is very contagious to see that, but I'm rarely seeing my own body type represented in other women and for style and for fashion. It can be really frustrating that there's there's a big gap there. So being around people like you, it was really fun. I think you kind of helped me this whole trip, like dress my body a little bit better and stuff too. Vice I think versa. I picked your brain apart uh, over jeans like a million times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly. Honestly, I, I, it was kind of a different trip for me in that way because I felt not that I feel judged by my friends, but I felt less judgmental of myself. Yes. And so, yeah, that was really that. fun. Yeah, I agree. It was really nice. And I'm appreciate that you let me take pictures of our butts. Yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. Like not naked. That sounded really bad. <laughs> I just realized that. No, I honestly, I never sense. ever would have done that though. Like I wouldn't have even posted the photo of the three of us in the PJs, but like whatever. I just want. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. So. 
it was i'm really beautiful. happy yeah, yeah no it's so inspiring it's so, honestly i could listen to you talk all day like even just our dinner conversations and just you are so the way you speak is mm-hmm. so wise and gosh guys that's so nice of you no it's and yeah so much self-awareness i you truly do but also just listening to you talk about stories as your your kids like how much you love them and just like I love your approach to parenting like I don't know what I would ever be like as a parent but I hope it would be like even half as amazing (laughs) as you are so I love that you called it awareness because that's actually something when a lot of people are like how do you build that like self-confidence or like how do you get to like that place of self-love and a big part of it is awareness when you just start like every moment that you're kind of feeling like crap pay attention to it when you're feeling amazing pay attention to it sometimes like it used to be that the that the times I felt the most beautiful was right after a hair appointment and when I was pregnant these two moments that were just you felt so powerful and so just beautiful and you take these pictures and whatever you just felt so so amazing and paying attention to the why and that when you start to kind of lean into it and you understand like it's in that self-care or it's in that like your body doing something so incredible or whatever it is same with like when you do exercise like I hate exercise more than anybody but I still do it like every day because there's this feeling at the end of it where of this strength and accomplishment and just like zoning in with your body I'm like that's why I do it I'm not doing it because I care about like what size of jeans I'm gonna wear this summer I'm care I'm doing it because I love that feeling of power and just confidence at the end of it and also at the same time paying attention to things that do really make you feel like crap when you're around certain people or when you're hearing certain messages or looking at certain images or watching certain shows pay attention to why you feel like crap or those moments that you do you can start to connect it and really start to detox that out of your life and that sounds really narcissistic in the sense that you're like I'm not going to pay attention to it I don't want to hear this it's guarding your heart it's protecting your mental health Mm -hmm. and it has changed I no longer we talk about social media hangovers for me it used to be spending time on Instagram would be coming away from it feeling so much less of myself and feeling so such a comparative nature and uh Now I I come away feeling like really empowered and just like, man, I just smiling at people's smiles and their bodies and their curves and like these really amazing things and getting angry sometimes on their behalf for like really good stuff, like not just picking ourselves apart and just like unfollowing those accounts that are bringing you anything but that. And, and you know what? I can't always get it perfect too. I had somebody write me even the other day and said like, when I look at your pictures, I really judge myself. And I was like, then I highly encourage you to unfollow me. Like that's not my heart on my messaging. And for whatever reason, sometimes you're taking something in and it's not the fault of the person that's posting. It's just where you're at and you need to listen to that. It is so important Mm -hmm. for your mental health, even if that means just taking a break or muting them before you can come back and really tune in with it again. I think it's important that you do that. I completely agree. Uh, okay, should we get to some listener questions? Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> Go for it. Okay. They're kind of all over the place. I wish they were kind of sure, that's okay. sections, but from MD Beans, I think I wrote that wrong. Sorry. Do you meal plan? Do I have a meal plan? Yeah. Um, no meal plan. I'm vegan and gluten-free, which has a lot to do with my gut health. I struggled very much with um, IBSD and IBSC um, growing up and into my 20s. So I do not have a meal plan at all. I'm too sporadic for that, to be honest. I just know my body pretty well at this point and what it loves and what it doesn't love. And I feed it that. That's the most important thing, too. Yeah. Um, so radiate. I'm thinking it's like Sarah with radiate. Yeah. Um, after birth question with proper diet and exercise, will loose skin become tighter again or nah? Um, I think it does for sure. It does to a degree. There's a lot of, um, loose skin looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those people that definitely felt that I would probably get a tummy tuck at some point. My mom, so a lot of you may not know, my mom's actually lost a substantial amount of weight as well. For her, loose skin actually created an overhang and a rash. For me, loose skin is like, almost like how it feels when you're not wearing a bra and you go running like there's just it's there it's on the surface but it's very movable if I'm bent over it's very loose and hanging but for a normal day-to-day most people would never know that it's there or that it's part of my body it's it, it doesn't really show in that sense but I will say that like over the years I used to think that it was going to be um much more pronounced it was it's so hard for me to kind of track it because I was 
you know, Bowden was nearly 10 pounds and then I was 225 pounds. So even when he was born, I, I was just bigger at that time. So losing weight was when it became the most pronounced. But again, like, oh, when I lost weight, it was kind of slower. It was over a progression of two years. So I think that sometimes just trusting your body to kind of land mm-hmm. in its perfect spot and being okay with that. So that's where it was for me. I know when I'll, I've heard stories of people that um, do extreme weight loss very quickly and this, oh, the skin hang is quite extreme a lot faster mm-hmm. because their body, like it's like an elastic, right? You can stretch it out a million times, but it needs time to kind of create that shape again. And it's never going to go back 100%. Like if you've ever held a rubber band before and stretched it out, it never really goes back to that original tight firmness, but it, it can come back quite a bit. Also with age, like your skin just loses elasticity. It's going so to, like for you, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, Whitney Jaco asks, how did you get to loving and embracing the changes your body made from having kids? It's funny because, you know, the last time I actually had a baby was almost nine years ago. So it's it's interesting to kind of connect with that postpartum community now because I feel like I'm just further down the road because I've just come a lot further with acceptance. I fully hated my postpartum body. I thought it was disgusting. I had stretch marks all the way up to my rib cage. My sister who's given birth to six kids wear the same genetic makeup. She does not have stretch marks on her stomach. So I, I struggled. My belly button's weird looking. My skin is loose. I have these really wide like slash like stretch marks it it wasn't easy um but it's very very normal this was something that I didn't realize was very normal until I started sharing about it myself and other people I just started to kind of pick up on their pictures and stuff as well or or perhaps me posting inspired somebody else to post and or they would say I have your exact belly and I'm like what like I I thought I was so alone in that so um I had an underwear I modeled for Nixwear at one point and they had me do this underwear shot and it was at a low angle, like straight of my stretch marks. And I remember when it went up live and the amount of comments of people being like, this is the first time I've ever seen a stomach that looks exactly like mine. Honestly, as much as it may have been really good for them, it was insanely freeing for me. So I just encourage people to just like wake up, realize it's so normal. It is so it it, detr- it distracts from the beauty of what childbirth is and growing a human and how it really does look different for everybody. And um, honestly, I I wear it with pride now. It's I'm not you even. Should. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not embarrassed or upset about it anymore. It's been a long, long road, but I. It, it's honestly like I. I see my ki- my kids have never been like picked up on it. They don't really make comments. Every once in a while, they'll like ask about it, and I'm like, "That's because I grew you." And when you remember that, like it just it it makes you kind of emotional because you're like, "My body actually did something in a form of a scar to make room for my child to grow and be in this world." And that doesn't happen for everybody, but for me, that's what it was. And stretch marks can also come from puberty. They can come from weight loss. People often think it's from weight gain. It's usually from weight loss. Um, any fluctuations like that. So a lot of women are out there are still feeling very lost because they might have those same types of stretch marks, but they're not finding their community because it's all in like this postpartum world. So I just want everybody to know I had stretch marks on my stomach even before I ever had kids. So this was not a new thing for me. I still have them on my breasts. I have a few of them on my back and my butt, but they are mostly on my stomach and yeah, really do normal. Do you remember, um, this is my question, do you yeah. remember the first like really scary, vulnerable post that you ever did and um, what kind of made you do it? I don't remember exactly. I think it had to do with stretch marks, but I think I was pretty posed when I did it. I made it look like as good as possible. Um, not so much like the loose skin or any rolls. I was really flat stomached. Um but I still remember shaking. Like I've, I've learned something about myself. I've learned that when I'm really scared to post something, it usually means it's important. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. Do and you I think, still get that feeling often. For sure. I, I think almost every single post, especially now at this point of the game, the larger an audience, the more people there are that can say something bad to you too. Um, come down to your heart of it. I'm really proud of these things. I'm proud of what I'm posting and, and I still have to be true to who I am and understand that I'm not going to curate myself to everybody's individual tastes for that. And maybe I'm not everybody's cup of tea and that's totally fine. But 
when I post those things and I felt very vulnerable, a lot of people mix um, excitement with fear because it's that same. T- somebody actually said that today on Facebook and I, I really loved it that we do. We mix up excitement with fear and we retract. We retract and we're like, no, I can't do this. I'm not feeling it. I, I'm not brave enough or I don't have the courage. And that's fine. But honestly, when you take that moment to take that plunge, the beauty of the response and the acceptance or even just your own release of it is really cathartic. Alas, the you're next so ins- <clears throat> inspiring. I'm sorry, I'm so quiet. I'm just like mesmerized. I know, <laughs> I, I know. I'm just sitting here so invested. <laughs> um, Shop the Valley asks, how did divorce not break you? And how do you handle not having your kids all the time? Uh, for, yeah, so I was married for 11 years. I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. Uh, my kids were my heartbeat of my life. They were all I did. They were my entire purpose. Um, divorce was hard. It was hard, but it did not break me. It was a necessary part before. I always talk about like you need to go through that darkness before you can even comprehend the light. I believe that if I had everything as I do right now, I would not have the heart of gratitude that I do and that overwhelming feeling of love and appreciation for the very tiny things in life that I have now that people don't even you wouldn't even think about my husband in the morning every morning I don't even think he has his eyes open yet and he'll come in and he'll pee in the bathroom while I'm getting ready and he just comes up behind me afterwards and he kisses me on the shoulder and that's such a moment that every single day it's like this feeling of safety and love that I didn't have 10 years ago I didn't have four years ago and uh, I needed that brokenness in order to feel that full healing. I needed to have that dark in order to understand and appreciate the light. And my kids needed to understand that our life is to be valued and it's to be cherished. And putting yourself through grueling years, I shouldn't say grueling, but like putting yourself through something that's not right for the sake of the kids was not the right answer. Um, they still do have two loving parents. Uh, I don't really talk to my ex. My kids are older, so we don't really need that communication with each other very often. But um, we, the kids and I have a very strong, strong bond and it, it's not broken. It's hard. I think a lot of people judge you when I had, I had somebody at one point say, oh my gosh, like sometimes I'm just jealous you get a night off. And I'm like, you have no idea what it's like to have a quiet home and be alone in it. But then I needed that. I needed that quiet. I need to be into my aloneness and be aware of that and start feeding back into my own self and uh, being a little selfish and understanding what that looked like and how that felt and, you know, weird learning curves. But it's been, I think it's been healthy for the kids. My kids, like I'm in Nashville right now. My kids are like in school this week and they're at their dad's house. And, and I think it's really cool that I get to come home and share stories and experiences with them. And they get to understand that their mom who spent 10 years just kind of waiting on them has a life outside of that. And they deserve that too. I, I want them to, at the end of it, take away that, um, their, their value and their worth is, is something of magnitude. And it's not something where you just kind of lay down your life for I have so much respect happy. for that because I also come from a divorced family and, and being a kid in that it's like I would never want my fa- like my I love my parents separately yeah so much. Mm-hmm. and I respect their decision to separate and give us that life because staying together just because yeah the fact of kids I, and they deserve that life too like they yeah. deserve to be happy I think I became the person I became the mother that I truly wanted to be when I was able to be a mother um the point like I'll just touch on this really fast but the point that I knew I needed to get divorced was the day I woke up and I didn't want to wake up I was actually really upset to be waking up and being alive and when you're trying to parent to be a mother from like this very thin line of I don't even want to be here on this planet Um, you got to do something where they have no mom at all. My mom described it as, you know, when you're on an airplane and they tell you um, the oxygen masks drop down and they explain like if if that happens, you need to, if trauma is happening, you need to put on the mask yourself first before you can put them on your child because if you don't make it, they don't make it anyways. I just got chills from that to put it like you need to put the mask on yourself first and when she said that it was like it's always stuck with me because I'm like I if I'm not okay I'm not a good mother so that is number one and it's it's really important I think that we put too much value um or I think society and mom guilt as a whole we tend to put it as like you know you sacrifice everything for your children and and yes of course you would jump in front of a bus if you needed to push them out of the way but it's also sometimes (sighs) saving yourself and putting that mask well, and on. I also think divorce for me taught me so much about relationships and, yeah. and never to settle and look for what you need 
in a relationship and, and it's such a good experience for kids to go through I don't think Absolutely. it's some people see it as a like a con but I, I really think I learned I, so I've much. I've had a very open conversation with my kids multiple times about divorce and I've said to them are you guys like okay with what happened are you they're like well we we miss you like we don't like having to shuffle between houses like that's annoying mm-hmm. but as a whole they're like no like we're actually really happy because they have an amazing stepdad now we have such a good life that they as much as there's some things that suck about it they're very they're very understanding and they recognize that this is better than what it was yeah, the holidays are a hard time. I find for me just splitting. Oh up yeah, family, yeah, so. and oh, probably hard for you as a parent so hard. too. For sure. So we split the day halfway. So I either get them in the morning or I get them um, at night, and and both have their benefits. But the the year that I didn't have them in the morning, like I just bawled my eyes oh. out. And I this year again, like I dropped them off after the morning, and and I had that, and I had that moment where I kind of shared with my followers, like. There's a lot of people who are alone because of these circumstances and situations. Just remember, like, your, the memories and the holidays that you share together, they happen when they happen. They mm-hmm. don't need to be, like, this specific moment. And uh, I felt so silly for bawling my eyes out because the second those kids walked in the door, it didn't matter that it was noon and mm-hmm. that we weren't up at 8 a.m. together. They walked in and it was effing Christmas morning. Mm-hmm. That's when it started for us. So, yeah, we made our memories and we had a great time. God, you're so inspiring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so funny when people say that because, like, real life me is, like, such a joke. Not at all. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to blow through the rest of these questions. Yeah, all, but, like, sure. touch on whatever you want to touch on okay. because, I like, there's so much value in what you're saying. There's, like, fluffing everywhere. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't even know what to do. There's <laughs> no like changing the it. I know we don't have a ruler. I'm really um, too. SKH123 asks, does Shane ever get frustrated or whatever with you being so open? For example, garlic in vagina. <laughs> he gets jokingly annoyed. Shane's, uh, yeah, that was, I actually talked one time on my Instagram stories about like how I use garlic to treat a yeast infection. And he was like, you can't put that on Instagram. But he's like such a, Shane's so funny, such a stickler for rules. Like one time I was like, I want to get this picture like downtown Toronto. I wanted like this shot. And he's like, you can't, that's a bike lane. You can't stand at a bike lane. Like he's such a rule stickler. <laughs> he's the most supportive human there is out there. He understands that he's not of this world, but he's incredibly proud of me. And uh, I, he knew full well what he was coming into <laughs> when he met me because I'm an open book. Like how I am with you right now is exactly how I am with him when we were dating. And I remember we went for like premarital counseling and the pastor was like, wow, like you guys are the top scoring couple I've ever had. And we're like, yes. And he's like, you guys have really like gone through these things. He's like, Sarah likes to talk about everything <laughs> almost a little too much. And I'm like, it's true. Like I want to unpack everything. Like, how are you feeling? Why are you feeling? Like, Let's talk about it. Let's do these, like these deep in depth talks. So he's very understanding of who I am and that, that I really feed off of that. Um, a lot of that actually comes from, uh, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress and it, it was a season where I was very suppressed of all my emotions. And so coming out of that, I have, I'm very scared to like be a suppressing type of person again. So I like to talk about it all. So he's very aware. He seems like such a great guy. He is. He's, yeah. he's hilarious. He's the funniest human. It's definitely like my best friend. I just want to spend like, it's a very, I know this sounds like weird for most people, but I, I he, it's weird that I miss him and it's weird that I come home and I feel happiness when I see him. That's such a, that. that's such a really, um, something that people need to pay attention mm-hmm. to you need to be with somebody that you're you're genuinely just to feel joy with and I feel that every day sometimes I literally you know when you get excited and your whole body gets in like a whole like, like I get that at nighttime oh. before I'm about to jump in bed because I'm like oh my god they're gonna snuggle you like mm-hmm. that's how I feel and oh, it's I not gone that. away um Bailey J asks highway slash driving anxiety and what you do for it yeah that's a big one for me um my mom is a big believer in submersion therapy which is our immersion therapy where it's just like going and doing so there was a couple circumstances where I didn't really have a choice I had to go and I had to do and I had to get on a highway to do it and riding back roads wasn't an option because there was a winter storm and those roads were like shut down so now I'm driving in a winter storm on the highway on the 401 which I do not want to be doing and it's terrifying um one of the best things that I came across was just Two things, listening to podcasts, I found were very calming. Music can kind of hype you up a little bit and bring out a little bit of anxiety. Um, Podcasts were just like kind of zoned you into the space and was less distracting, Um, but at the right kind of distracting. Uh, Waze, the app Waze is a very predictive 
type of way to drive where other people report things like a pothole to debris on the road to a road closure if things are slowing down speeding up if there's somebody who stopped their car you're very aware of everything that's happening ahead of you and it makes it a lot easier to drive but I highly recommend just like just taking the time to do it just do it um it's scary sometimes I still get kind of like nervous changing lanes or I like to change them very early before I ever have to actually be in that lane be okay with taking the slow lane don't feel guilty for being like that guy on the highway that is a little bit slower than everybody else and just just uh know that you know at the end of the day we are not the ones in control of this life. We are not the ones who we are like we're in control of our like daily actions and decisions, but to be held back by fear is not something that I really want to be a controlling factor in my life anymore. I think with all fears, you just have to kind of face them at some point and just do it in baby steps that feel it's going to feel uncomfortable for you, but that's where change happens and growth happens. So just like spiders. (laughs) <laughs> oh, spiders are crap. Okay. <laughs> Who, I the like, exception. I those guys. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, okay, go What on. makeup do you use? Sorry, Mel- Meltuto asked that question. What makeup do I use? Um, honestly, makeup is such a secondary thing to just really moisturizing your skin. Um, eating well and moisturizing are my number. Like, I'm obsessive with moisturizing. Day and night, doesn't matter. Like, l- lock it in. You have to have a good base before any makeup is going to work on your skin. Um, if I'm looking for something light, I'm definitely going with the full coverage Bare Minerals. It is amazing. I love their powder foundation. I was so shocked at it. Um, liquid, I definitely bounce between a ton of different ones. I'm still not 100 percent satisfied with a liquid foundation um fickle beauty is one of the new brands that i've kind of come across lately i love some of their color correcting um, eye brighteners and their lip stuff is they all their stuff is really cool because it almost has like a benefit to your skin as well as being a cosmetic so like their lip stuff is like a lip serum even though it's like a lip gloss Mm. So a little bit of a higher price point, go a longer way. Shape Tape Concealer is a game changer. Yeah, I'm going to buy that after watching. Yeah. I've been like just staring at you while you're Yeah, ready. it's pretty crazy how good it is. I feel like you just don't stop until you find the products you need. It's like an yeah. ever-changing. Um, but I'm you're obsessed. setting powder. Said, oh, yes. Derma I've been blend. borrowing that this entire trip. I love it's it. It's amazing. The setting powder called Derma Blend. It's like this translucent white powder. Use it to set your concealer. A lot of people don't realize how much you like. They were they're complaining that their makeup creases. It's because it's not set properly. This stuff actually like makes your makeup like New almost brand. waterproof. And it's Derma Blend. Derma Blend. I found it at Shoppers. Shoppers. Yeah. Okay. It's not cheap. I think it's like $36 for this tin, but it's going to last you a while. Um, it makes your skin like velvet and your makeup will last so much longer. I like it's amazing. setting powder that one. Yeah, no, I'm have. going. But there's also, I heard really good things about RCMA. Have you heard of that one? No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. And RCMA. It's, it's way cheaper, I believe, and it lasts a long time. So Interesting. check it out. Yeah, yeah I could try everything. Um, okay, last question. Alana Block asks tips and tricks for finding new sense of style and fashion after weight loss. Thrifting. 100%. Yeah. Um, also, when you use that save tab on your um, Instagram, oh uh, the thing yes. that people are so worried about is you go to thrifting and you're so overwhelmed. You see something like a fur vest or this plaid shirt and you're like, I have no idea how to style this. When you start paying attention to like other people's style and like, I like this, but I don't know why and I don't own anything like this, just start saving those things. And then when you're in the thrift store and you see a cute shirt, like go through those safe things and see how this other people. I, I think yeah. we talked about this yeah, on our first did. podcast I about you have to go with a vision. In you have to go with the vision outfits, and then i like look for pieces that resemble that yeah and it's perfect it's so perfect and don't be a thrift store uh, no just like going yeah. in and looking for and don't be afraid to so tailor hard. something like i bought a jacket oh, I, yesterday and i'm definitely gonna have to fix I the shoulders but everything that i buy yeah <laughs> it, it's store. thrifting is so amazing and you can also take a lot of the clothes that you've had before that maybe when you've lost weight you're no longer wearing you can go and take those and consign them or sell them off use that money and go thrifting half mm-hmm. price days are amazing i i would say seasonally you can do a good staple wardrobe for under a hundred dollars and have that go through jeans are an incredible jeans and shoes are two of the best things you can thrift for sweaters because for oh sweaters are big too but jeans are something that a lot of people own and it just doesn't fit their body right and they've already worn them they realize that at the end of the day same with shoes and they just 
thrift they just donate them so you can find some incredible jeans that perhaps fit your body perfectly that didn't fit somebody else and you're getting them for like four to eight dollars and take a friend like sometimes a friend will see something differently or like be able to eat. there's so much stuff that oh, they might catch Honestly, something yeah. i can't go with friends to be honest because oh, okay, well. i can spend hours in the thrift store and usually my friends are like okay in and out yeah people who just like come and i would say thrifting take too, the right friends go <laughs> go with like a section like don't go and just like look at the store we're so our minds are so curated to seeing a mannequin with a style and then a rack of clothes that are all in like certain sizes and we just grab mm-hmm. our size so when you're thrifting it's completely up to you to find that style so when you walk into the store and it's very overwhelming that's too much so take a section take sweaters for instance and go through every mm-hmm. single one of them and be ready to try stuff on like you know those yeah. days where you just don't want to don't go to you thrifting just, those days you can't just scan the rack and yeah. be like no you have to go through, you have to you go have through, to go through each one and be okay with going to different sizes one of my favorite mm-hmm. things is like finding big oversized sweaters and stuff you're gonna have to find them in a bigger size and for jeans a lot of places don't realize that like a size 26 isn't actually a size 6 or a size 28 isn't an 8 a size 28 is a 6 mm-hmm. so be aware of those things too because sometimes if you go up into the bigger sizes they've just mismarked them because they didn't understand okay. and the go to the men's section I do that men's sometimes section. I just like you yeah, yeah you love it jeans mm-hmm. um okay we have a ride coming to the airport in 10 minutes yeah. but i want after getting to know us in this trip i want you to give each of us a challenge i want to just oh. okay <laughs> I so tell Jackie that I, I told sarah that i've been thinking about it i honestly think it really comes back to a couple things that we've touched on awareness i want you guys to really start paying attention to what is bringing you what you know the marie kondo thing is like, so like what <laughs> so sparks, sparks your joy. joy like same thing be that way with your i haven't even watched the show but be right. be that way with your social media if it's sparking joy keep it around if it is not it is time to pack it up and it's time to give it away or pause it or just like it's put more it in a important box than like while. cleaning your closet out 100 percent. like your mind is so important it's such a cherished thing I also want you to start I'm not gonna say go and like post things you don't love but start taking pictures of the things you don't love I think sometimes when we see them in a different light or we take those pictures and we you know you look past the mirror and you think your butt is like certain way and then you actually go and pose it and you're like oh wow like I actually really I actually really like my butt like this is actually really cute um those things that really bother you start taking pictures of them start giving them life instead of just covering them up and shaming them um, you'll be surprised at how therapeutic it can be whether you post it or not I'm not going to push you that far but um, we're in a we're in a time where people are very much craving reality and personal connection and sometimes that comes through sharing our heart and our struggles and our overcomings and a lot of that does come back to our body or our heart or our you know our shame spots like divorce or you know these these different things that you we go through and I think that it's uh, really important that you just kind of lean into that a little bit more so that's my challenges for you clean up your accounts and start um, start celebrating those things that you've previously shamed. Challenge accepted. I also love that because I think our, our friends can also take that challenge on too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would the final thing I will say to everybody is when you look in the mirror, we're very self-critical. Even if you're like faking it till you make it, start just giving yourself compliments. See, there's that whole thing about like if you had two plants and you speak one to one negatively and one positively, the one that's negative like will sure not will grow them, yeah. and the other one will grow. That energy that you give your body and to give yourself is so important. And it, it sounds silly and it sounds weird and it sounds like a new agey. Um, it's very real. Your body is craving that. It needs love and it needs watering and nourishment. And there's a few different ways to do that, whether it's how you eat or how you exercise. And, and it's very much in the words that we say. It's like any relationship you have in your life. You can't just expect to woo it in the beginning and then just let it go when the flaws come around. We have to just completely engage and love it very unconditionally and be okay with our bodies ebbing and flowing with life. I'm going to miss being around you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Imagine I was like always like this. I'm just like a little therapy couch. I have a fluff on my eye. I feel like uh, I look like I'm crying. It's from your sweater. No. The sweater is fluffing onto everything. <laughs> it's really in my eye. Well, thank you so much for yeah, coming really on this trip with it. us. And thank just for you. So, so much and everything. And I literally don't know how we're going to top this. It but was, It was really inspiring to be around yeah. you last Honestly, you know. guys, it's so nice. Um, social media can be isolating when you have like just almost like such a big community. It's felt really good to kind of step into the real and have that. I have like a couple really, really close friends. And this is like 
I feel that with you guys and it's really I have no special. doubt that this will not be our last girls trip. Oh no. I love it. And it's kind of like this weird, oh my online, my social media friends. Yeah. We're just like <laughs> coming here for an inspirational powwow. We're real friends now. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotta go brush my teeth yeah, and we gotta go figure this up. shit out. Okay, but thank um you. thank you everybody for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review, um, comment on our post and tell us your favorite part about this episode. And we will be back next Tuesday with a new episode. Thank you so much, thank friends. You guys. Bye bye. bye. bye.